right, how about now we take a look at what we have on the front pages of local dailies. Let me start with the Star newspaper here. On the front page, Ruto turns to governors in a drought crisis. Ruto turns to governors in a drought crisis. That is what's on the front page of the Star. 3.1 million Kenyans in, in the north are facing starvation. Um, uh, the, uh, the president has also uh, asked the DP regarding Ashago to convene a meeting with the county chiefs. I'll give you more details shortly. Legend Kipchoge breaks his own record in Berlin. That happened yesterday. And uh, still on the front page, Anger is eight slain cops flown to city mortuary. Anger is eight slain cops flown to city mortuary. Uh, that happened yesterday. Uh, let me uh, start with a story where uh, deputy, uh, that is President William Ruto said to Gazette CBC task force to review curriculum. President William Ruto is expected to uh, Gazette members of an education reform task force to address concerns raised by Kenyans on the competency-based curriculum. The task force will have professionals who will gather public views then present a report to President Ruto. Um, another key issue is the implementation challenges that came with it. And, and on February 3rd, Coupet Vice Chairperson Julius Correll uh, Correll, uh, told reporters that secondary schools teachers were unprepared for the new curriculum. Of course, there have been a lot of concern as far as the CBC is concerned. Shock as city man shot 36 times, woman kidnapped, uh, gunman cornered um, uh, the late gentleman called Oyimba in broad daylight, companion found dumped in Tasia, uh, unknown number of gunmen aboard two vehicles cornered the man on Gesora Road and rained bullets on him killing him on the spot. Uh, during the incident, a female companion who was with the man escaped unharmed. She was found traumatized and abandoned in Tarsia. And uh, according to police, they said that um, it seemed that the two were lured before the shooting happened. That's according to a police officer. Uh, his father com continued to say that other officers said that Oyimba had a duck past. So as far as they're concerned, the gentleman had a past and now they're still investigating. Police recovered 36 spent cartridges, one live ammunition and five bullet heads. That happened on Friday. Ruto orders emergency efforts to fight a drought. Uh, Ruto, who jetted into the country on Sunday morning, ordered Rigathi Gashagwa, that is the DP, to immediately convene a meeting with the county governors on Monday, that is today, to develop an action plan to save lives. It has emerged that the state will have to recognize its budget to direct funds to drought mitigation measures, including providing money for the stock take-off program and massive distribution of food across northern Kenya and parts of North Rift. That is as far as that is concerned. And um, still on uh, President Ruto, clerics bless state house 13 days into Ruto reign, asks them to reach every corner of state house, pray under every tree. Um, in a complete departure from his predecessors, Ruto, known for his public prayer meetings, invited a large group of clerics to stomp every blade of grass in the compound and wade off evil and sanctify his new home. So he asked them to reach every corner of the state house and pray under every tree. That happened yesterday. And of course, First Lady Rachel Ruto said that this is something that will continue to happen um, at State House. And finally, Raila to chair ODM parliamentary group meeting on Tuesday. Uh, of course, over the last few days, there was some, uh, some heat coming from the Orange Party, quite literally, over the, uh, the group uh, group over the leadership on, in the party. And now ex ODM Executive Director Oduoro Nguyen was asked, uh, was rather tasked with the mandate of convening the meeting to claim uh, to calm the turmoil triggered by how Plum House leadership slots were shared out. So that is what will be happening tomorrow in the ODM party. Jen.
All right, let's now go through the Daily Nation and, of course, starting with some good news as captured here on the front page regarding this man, Kipchoge, the record breaker. So um, this story has been captured here on page 35 of this particular daily. Um, double Olympic 42-kilometer champion breaks his own record by a whole 30 seconds to win his fourth Berlin title. So this happened yesterday and just going back to the other previous wins that he has had, the go back to 2015, 2017, 2018 and now 2022. So um, he beat his record by 30 seconds and looking at uh, the upside of this all, he will be pocketing an estimated um, 113,000 US dollars, which loosely translates to about 13.7 million Kenyan shillings. And this has been broken down to um, $22,000 will be for his victory. Another $33,000 will be for bonuses for running under two hours and two minutes, uh, the previous record. And 56000 will be for breaking the world record. So that is as far as his earnings will go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do you say? The figures, the figures sound so a mouthful. <laughs> they are a mouthful. Yeah. You know, he's being awarded for um, his victory, of course, being the first one. Mm. Then bonuses for running under two hours, two minutes and 30 seconds. And another $56,500 for breaking the world record. Jen, you said that Kipchoge, he said, is a, Kipchoge is an institution. He's an institution. As he is, kuna administration, kuna finance, kuna HR, kuna health, kuna legal, all of that, marketing, communications, and as a result, you can see what good management but has brought about. He analysis. definitely had. All right, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, still coming to the front page of the Daily Nation, um, on matters concerning health in Uganda, um, Ebola still is a very big problem. And this is a story that has been covered here on page 7 of this particular daily. 20 deaths in Uganda as laxity stalks Kenya. So according to the uh, Deputy Director of Uganda National um, Institute of Public Health in the Ministry of Health, and he's also the incident commander of Ebola, that is Dr. Henry Kyobe, um, ground zero still remains to be in Mubende, but so far there are 31 confirmed cases. And uh, as of Tuesday, and this is as of Tuesday, uh, as of Saturday, and which is a huge rise from what was reported um, on Tuesday. And uh, the number of fatality has also increased from 1 to 20 within the same time frame. And now concern is being raised uh, in regards to the borders and especially so looking at the Busia border here in Kenya where there still is minimal screening ongoing when it comes to p uh, persons that are considered to be at risk population. And this includes travelers, truck drivers, bush meat handlers, as well as health care workers. So people are being... Um, urged to actually pass through that particular, um, they have set up a border there, uh, a tent rather, at the border that will be uh, conducting some screening to facilitate safe entry into the country. And anyone who seems to have been um, exposed in any shape, manner or form will be under supervision and under close observation for 21 days. So that is that story concerning Ebola and what is happening in Uganda. But before we get to continue with the daily nation maybe regina you could come in at this particular point indeed when you say ebola uh question is how safe are we as kenya given mm -hmm. to the porosity of our borders especially in busia but authorities as well as medics have so far not given us any uh report of the virus having crossed over from neighboring uganda and we pray it remains so Front page of the standard this morning, being the 26th of September 2022, is all full of none other than Eliud the Great. He has a full um, cup and pick to go after that win of two hours, nine seconds at the Berlin Marathon there, shaving off a cool 30 seconds of his previous uh, record there. So he's quoted two hours, one minute, nine seconds. The new marathon world record at Berlin and Eliud, Eliud the Great. I like what they did uh, there with his name, Eliud the Great. 
Also now I'm uh, looking back home and it is in, uh, you know, purification of State House. And uh, the prayers that were held yesterday at State House Nairobi ended up trending on Twitter with Kenyans expressing their views and thoughts in regard to the heavy presence of uh, clerics at State House to purify State House. And so much was said online. But now here, President held giving prayers to celebrate his election win as after jetting back into the country from the u.s and he urged the clergy to pray for his office and the economy that is choking in debt then government uh, to increase nssf contributions in regard to this particular proposal is that last week the high court stopped a bid to increase the monthly contributions and now president uh, william ruto is uh, is arguing that people uh, who earn higher salaries cannot save in equal measures as a one with lower incomes. Well, the court uh, pronounced itself, says that the government uh, received uh, uh, after the High Court stopped the bid to increase the monthly contribution, ruling that the new requirement was not subjected to public participation and was a breach of the Constitution, which demands community input before major decisions are uh, taken. This is the th through the NSSF Act of 2013. The government had sought to raise the monthly contributions uh, by employees from the current 200 monthly or 4,800 yearly uh, to capped at uh, 4,154 uh, being the highest amount like if you earn the lowest 4,000 if you ha earn the highest 144k. You paying six as an employee you pay 6% your employer pays 6%, this makes it a total of your contribution at 12%. So for instance, just speaking, that you earn 10,000 shillings, if this proposal had gone through, you would be contributing a cool 1,200 1, monthly, and your employer, uh, actually the total is 12, uh, 1,200, so to speak, while the person who is earning around 184,000 there would be parting with an amount between 12,000 or 17,280 monthly, just to ensure that we do matters of social security. This was, however, shot down by a high court, and we're waiting to see which direction it takes now, given that it has received backing from President Ruto in regard to that matter. Talking about backing and money, is that now uh, pundits opine that uh, the UDA should work with the fiscal truth and this all emanates from the conversation that we've had from the president as well as his deputy, uh, often quoted saying that they inherited a dilapidated economy. And now, according to um, the new administration, is that 93 million shillings is the balance that the new administration says it inherited from the Uhuru Kenyatta's government. Uh, without a clear picture of today, tomorrow will be smoke mirrors. Now, a change in guard in leadership has surfaced uh, and, uh, in the face of public debt that was totally underestimated. In this particular article, government expenditure, uh, to quote the Auditor's General 2020-2021 report on national government ministries, uh, departments and agencies, the expenditures seem to drive the revenue collection projections as opposed to actual revenue collections driving projections of expenditure. That means that government has engaged in mega, level, mega development projects that's increasing the gross estimated um, expenditure over the last five years without due consideration of performance in revenue collection for prior years. Of the latter, now is that uh, we have developments, some that are, uh, fa ha that are stalling, according to the World Bank there, that uh, before the elections there, we had a cool 41 projects that uh, might actually stall if they do not get the requisite financial support. And as we talk about matters of debt, uh, by June 2022, our debt, public debt, stood at 8.4 trillion shillings. That's just but a sneak peek of the front page of the Standard this morning, a day that we await the full judgment that was delivered by the Supreme Court in the presidential election uh, petition there. On the 5th of September, 21 days have lapsed, today being the 26th 
this judgment is going to be availed in full and maybe it will put to rest the questions that a majority of Kenyans, especially those who found themselves in the opposition, asking why the Supreme Court took the decision that it took and unanimously at best. We're going to be keeping tabs on that as well as other stories that continue shaping our local scene as well as regional and global matters. I'm Regina Manyara and I wish you a pleasant viewing ahead to you, Doreen. Right, and that is what uh, the PD is holding for you this uh, Monday morning. That's actually one of those main reads there where the Apex Court is said to deliver that detailed judgment. Remember that on September 5th, they unanimously in one voice upheld the election of President William Ruto and obviously rejected the entire evidence that was, pro uh, that was uh, produced by the Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Coalition Party. Away from that, Gashagwa is also, that is the Deputy President, set to lead the high-level farming talks. This is what the President said yesterday during, during that um, Thanksgiving uh, ceremony or event, I should say, that was taking place at State House. And remember, this is due to the ravaging effects of drought that are currently ailing the country. In fact, looking going by what um, experts are saying, that this is one in after a very long while, 40 years, so to speak, that we are really facing um, uh, this uh, um, kind of of drought and again also governors uh, or leaders in the northern part of the country a good number of them are now saying that um, the government needs to declare this issue a national disaster largely also what took place last year around a time such as this in September where the former president equally declared mm -hmm. drought a national disaster but the lingering question still rem remains uh, what can we do possibly to just curb the issue that is drought also going by what the national drought and management authority uh, said earlier on this month that they equally put out uh, those country uh, counties counties that are in the alarm phase um, country counties that are equally you know just facing this issue um, that is drought in fact 10 out of these counties are now in the alarm phase. So clearly just saying the, those that are in the red and really need um, a lot of assistance. There has been quite a number of um, um, things that the state has tried to employ, key among them being cash transfers. In fact, this took place as early as this year, but still, just aside from cash transfers, what more can we do to curb the drought issue that still remains the biggest questions that you know is just lingering also amongst experts mind minds away from that activists filed suit to nullify nominations nomination list for Nairobi members of county assembly this is because of that issue whereby the list that was presented really didn't quite meet the requisite you know just going by what has been filed by uh, one legislator there who has uh, filed a petition in the High Court to just bar, you know, that particular list from uh, take going to fruition because, I mean, it was used to award loyalists as opposed to giving these positions to those that really are supposed to be getting this position, of course, talking about the youth, women, marginalized, and PWDs. So this is not just one issue that has El Nairobi County, but also various counties have faced um, the issue of the nomination list, key among them being the fact that it's now being used to award loyalists as opposed to what is stipulated in the Constitution. That's just basically what the Fodeli is holding for you because quite a number of these stories are similar this Monday morning. Mm, all right, before we take a break, let me just look at uh, one story here. COB, Chief Falls 10 Counties, um, 15 billion shillings manual payroll. Report says that manual system is prone to abuse by county officials. Um, that is according to the controller of budget, Margaret Nyakango, who has said in her latest report, the report recovering the budget management in the devolved units for 2021-2022 singles out 10 counties for processing 15.63 billion shillings in wages manually. Now, the 10 counties cited in the report include Bomet for spending 1.24 billion shillings, Nakuru 1.06 billion shillings, Garissa 1.03 billion shillings, Vihiga 934 0.89 million shillings and CIA 792.55 uh, million shillings, etc. etc. Uh, others include Kiambu County, Homa Bay County, Laikipia, Kisumu, uh, and Muranga. So uh, the use of manual uh, payroll is now putting counties 
into that precarious situation as far as the fight against corruption is concerned. ESCC seeks to recover 33 billion shillings assets required illegally. Eyes billions of shillings from two ex-governors they believe enrich themselves with public money. Two governors, 33 billion shillings worth of assets. Director says that we should take a break at that particular point. We'll break back with more.